okay, let's play three notes at a time and break down this performance. Um, I start with this, which is the voicing of an A 13th chord, 7th, 3rd, 13th, or 6th. Taking that down, so more or less, as we talked about earlier, keeping one note but doing a kind of a small melody on, on another string. And then I play this major pentatonic. And I, same thing. And so instead of doing it like legato with a slow bend up, I do it more staccato with also a pull off from the from the minor third here to give it a little bit more edge. And then go into the four chord, the D. I play. So more or less similar to this, but I've taken these in opposite or like contrary motion here. This one goes down from the third to the seven, and this one goes up from the seventh to the fifth. And I'm adding the fifth on top. And then some more or less playing a melody here on the B string, while parts of this D7 rings are. And then sliding up to a B minor, approaching the 13th of the D chord, or the 6th as the, that's the highest note. Sliding that down to an A minor triad, more or less playing a B minor to an A minor over D. So over D it is. And then we're back to A, and I play this more single note line. So it's similar, uh, it's the same motif more or less, over three differences. And then I play. Um, so I'm outlining an E ninth chord here, uh, approaching chromatically up to the, uh, to the third of the E. Again, the same melody, more or less, as I did over the A 13th and the D 7th, D 9 that I do here. I do this kind of rake over, uh, over an E augmented chord. So. Um, it's a little bit extended melody going from just changing this to changing both. Going in. Uh, approaching the third and the root of the A. And then I do a motif that I slide up. More or less than third going to fifth of A. Sixth going to root. And then repeating both of those an octave up. And that's a that's a good way of changing positions. I'm you know I'm going from more or less ninth position up to the seventeenth position, here. and it doesn't sound like I'm trying to force it. I I hope because I'm just using a simple motif that repeats itself, and it's more or less just outlining the chord with the addition of the sixth. Oh, sorry, <laughs> well, that's an interesting sound, bending up uh, on the high E, uh, and then I play this. This is the beginning of the second chorus. And then... So kind of a similar line starting on the bending up to the third. Bending up to the seventh. And then I do this. So more or less play... Landing on this triad, but before that I approach that with a kind of a, a A sus two thing going into the major third. And then I play this, more or less move, have moved this up, this um, voicing up in the scale, getting a second interval here as well. And then a fourth on top, as well as this one is, with a melody still happening on the B string. And then I keep this note, and these move, and opposite directions for a D7th voicing without the third. 
and then I add this as well. And this is a kind of very dissonant voicing as well. The, the second interval you get here, major second, and then you get a major seventh here as well. But it still sounds very cool, I think, over this, very colorful with this 13th on top. Uh, and I play that kind of staccato so it won't be too, too weird and let that ring for too long. I let this ring out and then get some stabs there, staccato style. And then I land, bring this um, little bit of country motion there again. We'll talk more about that soon. Uh, going up to the A major triad, down to the G major triad, because that will give us the uh, the A 11th sound. And then also doing chromatically from the F sharp minor, F minor, very short, to uh, E minor. And then we're going to the E 7th chord. Landing on the A. So I'm, I'm using these uh, ideas several times. It's like third sliding up, and I. That's more or less the same idea uh, in a descending way instead over, over the E chord going to A in the end. And then I ended with um, um, major pentatonic A line. That's uh, a few ways you can use um, triads and triple stops and like overall three note voicings. And I've, I've enjoyed that over the last few years or so, trying to see how I can find this good mix of tension and release. Uh, I mean, this is quite a lot of tension over the D. But you can resolve it to this without any of the notes moving more than two frets. This goes up two frets, this go down two frets, and this go just one fret up. So you'll have this cool balance of that's a little bit shaky, it's not really stable, it's dissonant, and three strings creating this at the same time into something that's really stable, just outlining the, the actual major triad of the root note. So as I said earlier, try to figure out these things, how they work, uh, and put them into context as soon as you can and don't try to play all of this necessarily but find the ways that you like to implement implement this in uh, in your plan that's the goal <laughs>